The year was 1977. Every word I move so descriptive like an adjective I got a vendetta against people who patented it Being negative when you should be getting after it I got facts over facts over tracks This and that spitting slow, spitting fast I could roast, I could gas, think I'm okay at last But I don't know if that can erase all the past And the pettiness, a reflection of the emptiness Hilarious, you think you're with my time, you're delirious Mysterious, because you hide behind a fake exterior Inferior, you know I'll always be a bit superior Get off of me, this ain't no humble brag I want you to hear words, you can say them back I want you to feel free from the chains at last And to believe in what you got, it was built to last, yeah now that I've been put through hell I never got anyone's help I had to do it all myself I don't ever slow up No, I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement I don't ever slow up No, I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement of being incompetent, mental health is confidence, dreams and some honestness. That they were being used and not considered equals began to unify a diverse group of people, from New England farmers to southern landowners, in a shared sense of injustice. At first, their resistance was subtle. There were boycotts, organized refusals to purchase British goods. Groups like the Sons of Liberty emerged, speaking out against what they viewed as unfair policies. These were not violent uprisings, but a peaceful form of protest. And yet, even in these early stages, something important was happening. A culture of resistance was taking root. The British response was predictably stern. Laws became stricter, and enforcement became more aggressive. But what the British failed to realize was that each crackdown only further inflamed the sense of unity and determination among the colonists. What might have been a series of isolated grievances was beginning to look more like a collective cause. Soon the discussions within colonial taverns, homes, and public squares evolved. People were no longer talking about minor grievances, but began asking fundamental questions. What did it mean to be free? What did it mean to have a say in one's government? In the bustling towns of Boston, Philadelphia, and beyond, Individuals from all walks of life were beginning to consider a radical idea. Independence. This was not a decision that came lightly. Many of the colonists had strong ties to Britain, cultural, familial, and economic. But the sense of being wronged, the sense of being unheard, was pushing them toward an unprecedented course of action, in 1774, representatives from the various colonies convened to form the First Continental Congress, a body meant to represent their collective interests. These men were not radicals, but moderates, merchants, lawyers, and landowners who believed that reconciliation with Britain was still possible. They drafted petitions, pleading for their rights as British citizens to be recognized, but these calls were ignored or dismissed by the British government, and so slowly but surely the tone shifted. The once loyal subjects of the British crown began to consider themselves something else entirely. Americans. Their efforts to communicate and negotiate with the British Parliament had been rejected, and as more restrictive measures were placed upon them, the colonists began to realize that there was no going back. The idea of self-governance, of forming a nation where power flowed from the people and not from a distant monarch, was gaining traction. And then, in the spring of 1775, a spark was lit. What had been a series of frustrations and petitions suddenly became something much larger. Colonists across the land were organizing, not just in thoughts and words, but in 
deeds. They formed local militias, bands of ordinary people determined to protect their homes and communities from what they saw as unjust British interference. And though the initial skirmishes were relatively small, they marked a clear turning point. This was no longer about asking for rights. It was about defending them. As events unfolded, the colonies found themselves in a precarious position. On one hand, there was still a sense of uncertainty, a reluctance to fully break from Britain. But on the other, a growing realization that freedom, true, unqualified freedom, could not be achieved while remaining under British control. The debates were fierce. Some colonies hesitated, concerned about the dangers of separation, while others pushed for swift and decisive action. But eventually the idea of independence became too powerful to ignore. By the summer of 1776, momentum had built to a crescendo. Leaders from across the colonies gathered once again, this time with the intention of declaring their independence from Britain. On July 4th of that year, the Continental Congress adopted the Declaration of Independence, a bold document drafted primarily by Thomas Jefferson. This declaration was not merely a list of grievances, but a statement of principles, declaring that all men were created equal and endowed with certain inalienable rights. It was a radical notion, one that challenged the very idea of monarchy and set forth a vision of a government derived from the consent of the governed. With the signing of this document, the colonies formally declared their intention to forge a new path, one that would lead them away from the British Empire and toward the creation of the United States of America. But the road to independence was far from easy. In the years that followed, the colonies faced numerous challenges, both internal and external. There were moments of doubt when it seemed as though their efforts might falter. Yet, through it all, the determination of the colonists remained steadfast. The commitment to their cause was not just about achieving political independence, but about building a new society, one based on the ideals of liberty, equality, and self-determination. Over time, these ideals began to take shape in ways that extended far beyond the battlefield. The American Revolution was as much about ideas as it was about events. It sparked debates about governance, human rights, and the role of the individual in shaping society. While many of these conversations were happening in the political sphere, they were also taking root in the daily lives of ordinary people. From rural farmers to city dwellers, the people of the colonies were thinking about what it meant to be free in ways that were deeply personal. The challenges faced by the colonies were immense. Not only did they have to contend with the might of the British Empire, but they also had to build a new government from the ground up. The Articles of Confederation, adopted in 1777, served as the first attempt at creating a unified national government. However, it quickly became clear that this system was too weak to handle the complexities of governing a diverse and growing nation. The central government had little authority, and the states often acted independently, leading to conflicts and confusion. By the mid-1780s, it was apparent that a new framework was needed. In 1787, delegates from the states gathered in Philadelphia to draft a new constitution. This document, which would later become the foundation of the United States government, created a balance between federal and state power, established a system of checks and balances, and enshrined the protection of individual rights. The adoption of the Constitution in 1789 marked the beginning of a new era for the young nation, one in which the ideals of the revolution were enshrined in law. Yet, even as the Constitution laid the groundwork for a stable government, the challenges of nation-building persisted. The years following the Revolution were marked by growing pains, as the new nation grappled with issues of governance, economics, and foreign relations. Internally, the question of slavery loomed large, as the ideals of freedom and equality stood in stark contrast to the institution of human bondage that persisted in the southern states. 
The debate over slavery would continue to fester, eventually leading to deeper divisions within the country. On the international stage, the United States faced its own challenges. As a new nation, it was eager to establish itself on the global stage, but it was also wary of being drawn into the conflicts of Europe. The French Revolution, which began in 1789, was viewed with both sympathy and caution by American leaders. While they shared a common cause with the French in their desire for liberty, they also recognized the dangers of political instability. Despite these challenges, the American Revolution had fundamentally reshaped the world. It was not just a struggle for independence, but a bold experiment in self-governance that would inspire future generations. The principles enshrined in the Declaration of Independence, and later the Constitution, became a beacon for those seeking freedom and self-determination around the globe. For the first time in history, a group of colonies had successfully cast off the rule of a distant empire and established a republic founded on the ideals of liberty and equality. The story of the American Revolution is not just a tale of events, but of transformation. It is the story of how ordinary people, driven by a desire for something more, 